just changed the way that music's put together now. There's, there's very few bands around anymore. It's just these kids out of drama school. It's, I blame line dancing and karaoke. Yeah. Which you is know. why you're doing it tonight, Frank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, but I'm the karaoke element. It is. <laughs> Blockhead's gigs now are like, it's like a Blockhead's gig without Ian, so that gives you a spacey feeling, and then it's like a wedding. Because a fat bloke wanders on the side. Sex and jazz and rock and roll with the owner of a red Austin Montego. <laughs> the lottery numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Take the glasses back to the bar. Yeah. <laughs> Do your talking while you're walking. <laughs> um. Oh, yeah. Great. So, of course, then, uh, I have to ask you while I've got the opportunity, have you got any favourite, put you on the spot like this, have you got any favourite Ian Jury lyrics that stick with you? He had a phrase, uh, he, he had a song on an album that, that the band and I have been arguing about all day because we can't remember what it's called. <laughs> it's 10,000 weeks holiday, 5,000 weeks holiday. <laughs> 3,500, 40,000 40, 40, 40, 40, weeks holiday, which was an album he did with, with uh, the music a scratch, scratch brand of cowboys that weren't the Rockheads. Yeah. <laughs> well, the music students. Yeah. And he had a, a song in that called Percy the Poet. Poet. And he had a line in that called The Count Dracula, a spectacular vernacular. And that's how I always saw Ian, and I just, I just, it was the loveliest, yeah. the right loveliest yeah. line, The Count Dracula, the, and I could never, I always say Dracula. Dracula, yeah. <laughs> Nuclear. <laughs> the Count loved, Dracula, yeah, a spectacular it, vernacular. Yeah. yeah. The Royal like, Academy for Jack the Ladder. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to call Lord up Winston that, would not he? Before he put it. Yeah, no, there was the, the turns of phrase and, and, and use of words. I mean, particularly in, in, in you know, reasons to be cheerful. Is, and the, it's, it's just a list, but the, the pacing and bounce of it is yeah. it's just a, it's fantastic to sing. And a lot, I remember, uh, you know, some mate of mine was in the balcony at the academy and he said, When I came out and they heard you playing the intro, he said, People around him were going, You never get through it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, to me, it's just because I. Just it's, it got ingrained when I was when I was you know 19. So it's great playing with words. That was his strong point, that, wasn't it? Exactly. It was almost like it. jazz with words. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah no, the poetry on, and Ian's Ian's poetry as well. Did he, did he put music to uh, We Won the Gold? Yeah, we did. We did. Yeah, you did. You did a musical yeah. version. Of it, yeah. Didn't you? yeah, I remember seeing him doing a poetry gig at the at the old Vic. Yeah, accursed be the hand of fate that led us to this place. It was such a great opening line. It's like the opening line of a novel. Yeah, you know, yeah, Shakespeare. Or something. Just yeah. amazing, amazing. I just love. And he he did this poem. He finished with. It. He did a couple of poems, and then he finished with this. Where you won the gold, and just his little figure there with his stick. A cursed be the hand of fate that led us to this place. You know, all the way through it, and the, the last lines are just repeating. We won the gold. We won the gold. And then he just backed off and walked out, still going. We won the gold. You know, the wings, yeah. which uh, just. He was a, such a showman, you know. Yeah. yeah. So I'm never up there emulating. I'm just there paying respect to the work. And I don't do any dancing about. There's no sense of me thinking of taking this place. I'm just helping out some pals. Yeah. <laughs> no, please don't panic. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to be doing this as a Phil career. not dancing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, dancing. Have you seen the stage? <laughs> the arrangement of picnic tables that the bully has for me to perform on tonight. <laughs> Their insurance premiums are through the gig, through the roof for this gig alone. Yeah? I'm sure also you must have a really good Ian Jury story. Full. There's loads. Yeah. Too many. The one about Omar, though, was a good one, wasn't it? I'd, yeah. I, I pulled Omar Sharif off him one night because <laughs> he was. <laughs> Omar started eating him. He, well, it, was all, it all started because there was a girl. We went into the restaurant with Peter Blake. We were having dinner and Ian was really drunk and he looked over and he saw Omar Sharif sitting with this girl. And the girl, he knew the girl. He taught her at art college or yeah. something. So he steamed over there and we're going, no, don't. Right. And he did and he started talking to her and, it, and then the next thing I knew was Omar was picking him up and punching him. So I ran over and I grabbed hold of him and pulled him off. His, his bouncers got up and went, and I went, no, no, picked Ian up and ran back to the table. It was like, oh. <laughs> I mean, you can imagine what, it, it was only about, you know, two lines went down, and it was, uh, he said, Ian said to him, uh, I think the best film you ever made was your first one, and Omar said, I don't care what you think, and Ian said, well, for you, and you're a <laughs> 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 But they made up since, they made up after that. They, they made, made up that night. They yeah, ended up yeah, they kind of made up. Each other yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, they did a film together after that, since then, and all that. Yeah. 
Yeah. But it was funny because uh, we got in a cab going home and he says to the cab driver, I've just been punched in the teeth by Omar Sharif. And the cab driver goes, that's the most expensive fist you'll ever have in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I interviewed him once and uh, you know, it's the first time I met him and I was really nervous and uh, I said, uh, you know, when you look back on your life, Ian, do you think that there's, there's anything you've missed through your disability? And he went, just a couple of buses. <laughs> 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 missed, a missed a couple of buses. <laughs> Typical, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, superb. All right. Well, I was going to say, I mean, thank you very much for your time, Louis. You're welcome. Um, I hope the gig goes all right tonight, and hopefully we're going to come along and catch you later. Yeah, but, right. Come on down. Don't bring the cameras. Whatever you do, don't bring <laughs> the Bootlegs cameras. of the gig, blockheads and fills you, but it's live at the Bully, will be available yeah. in Oxford Market. <laughs> Book now on DVD. I'm sure that's not how we work. Thank you very much, Phil. <laughs> like channel 6. Channel 6 is a bootlegging yeah, operation. Channel there is six, no Channel yeah. 6. There is no Channel 6. Chris's big bootlegging <laughs> house of fun. It's got a Hugh Cornwell gig. He's on sale as well now. Yeah. Sadly, Billy Bragg wouldn't let them interview him, so there's no Billy Bragg bootleg available. The one we advertised during the Hugh Cornwell in interview will not be available now. She and who's she? <laughs> it's a white. stealth camera. <laughs> <laughs> You're watching, watching 6TV, the Oxford <laughs> channel. Musicians! In Birmingham. Is that in Birmingham? Yeah, there you go.